because I have cracked no codes. You cracked the code. No, I'm going to talk to you all very honestly because we're all drummers, right? Who's taking lessons here? Anyone? Wanda. Okay, awesome. All right. I know. Wanda is my number one groupie. It's wonderful. Okay, I saw a TED talk one time, um, and it was on faking it till you make it. And did you know that when people are born blind, they, they run races and they still do this at the end? Like, they still put their hands in the air. They've never seen anyone do that. It's just like a physiological thing that you can do to pump yourself up. So there's one of my tips for the day. Just go hide in the bathroom and pretend you've already won. <laughs> pretend you've already won. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about faking it till you make it today, but I don't mean the kind of faking it where you jump in a helicopter and start pressing buttons if you've never flown a helicopter before. You know, nothing insane. Uh, do anybody know Rick Hamilton? Okay. He, he told me one time that... Uh, when I go on stage, I need to be someone else. I need to pretend that I am someone with confidence, and when it's all over, I can be myself again. <laughs> so um, that's the kind of faking it till you make it that I mean. You, you, have, you get confidence. You, know, you're in, you find yourself in a situation where you, you know a little bit, enough to get yourself into that situation. Um, so you got to pretend you have confidence until you make it, which is getting through that situation or learning from something from that situation. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and I'm going to tell you about that by giving you uh, my backstory with drums, um, which is a little different. I didn't grow up playing drums when I was 34. I'm 43 now. That gives you like, it's nine years. It's not 10 years, it's nine years. Okay, <laughs> when you start to get older, you don't want to add extra years on there. Um, so when I was 34, I was feeling old, and I thought I should do something for my brain. So um, Sudoku puzzles were real big then, and I thought I'd try Sudoku puzzles, and I hate them. I hate Sudoku puzzles. So like I didn't understand them. I didn't care, and the answer's like on the bottom. All you gotta do is flip it over. So I would just, I mean, I'll cheat every time. So I don't want to do Sudoku puzzles. So I had to come up with something else. Like what else am I gonna do? Um, and I heard that musical instruments, like learning to play a musical instrument is really good for your brain. So I go, okay, uh, I don't like to sit still. So I was like, drums would be good. Um, I'll, maybe I could learn to play the drums. And it just so happened that my six-year-old son had gotten a drum kit from Drums Etc. Um, it was a full-size kit, it, but it was a beginner kit. Um, and like most six-year-olds, he <laughs> didn't play it, <laughs> you know, didn't stick with it. Um, and I thought, okay, I could, I'll take lessons. Um, I wanted something to do for a couple minutes a day just to be good for my brain. So I marched myself into drums, et cetera, and I said, I want to take lessons every other week. And they said, no, you have to do it every week. I was like, what? Like, I don't have time for this. I had three little kids. It's like, okay. The other thing about being an adult is if something doesn't work out, a hobby, like, you can just quit. It doesn't, you know. So I'm, I'm going to try this. Um, so I started taking lessons, and I loved it. Like, right away, I loved it. And I, I don't know why or how. It's still a big surprise to me because I can't even get through one Sudoku puzzle. So why I love this so much, I'm not sure. But I really did. Um, and I think the biggest thing for me then was I thought that that feeling of loving something new was something you only got as a child. Um, I don't know why I thought that. Um, you know, when you're learning something when you're a kid, you get really excited about it. And I... I didn't imagine that that happened when you were an adult, and it did. And uh, so that was my making it moment there, like just realizing that there was more to do than maybe what I had been doing, you know, like that kid, that kid life, you know. Um, so, uh, oh, and here, we're through this now. So here's how much I didn't know. Hey, Am I allowed to catch this one? Yeah, you are. <laughs> you never know. Okay, so. Sorry. Yeah. So I was taking lessons, and during my lesson, so Rick, I took lessons from Rick Hamilton. He, he flipped this thing, and he started playing. And I was like, what is that? And I mean, I was far into lessons at this point. Like, and he's like, well, that's the snare throw. You know, the snare that he has what makes it a snare drum. I was like, wow. I was like, does every snare drum have that? He was like, yeah. I, said, I ran home that day. And I checked my snare drum. I was like, oh my God. 
<laughs> I remember sending him a text to me like, my snare drum has it too. He must, I'm sure he thinks I'm insane. Uh, but that's just a fake. That's just like, as far as faking it, like, you know, I didn't even know that. Um, there's just a lot, there's just so much to learn. Um, so the kid that took lessons before me, the, the time slot before me, um, I found out he went to my church, and his mom was always there, too. So I got, became friends with his mom, and I would come in and um, talk to his mom before lessons, and she'd say, are you ever going to play in church? I was like, no, I'm not going to play in church. Like, I'm really happy at home, like, pretending I'm a rock star. Like, uh, this is for me. This isn't for anyone else. I'm just, I don't want to play in church. Well, doesn't she go and tell the guy at church? There's, she, she can play drums. Okay, so... <sighs> So he calls me up and he's like, I hear you play drums. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Not really. He's like, well, come on in. Let's, let's try it out. So I go in, not knowing anything. Talk about like faking it. Like, I don't know how, how to, to play with a guy who's playing a piano. Um, so he's like, just, just play along. So he starts playing the piano and I play along for a little bit. And he said, I can work with that. <laughs> so I got the gig. <laughs> like, ugh. Um, so, um, and as far as, as faking it, you know, I just didn't feel like I had any idea what was going on. And then they, then they're like, okay, you're going to play these songs and they hand you the guitar chord sheets. Like, right, Josh? <laughs> yeah, like, like, what's this going to help me do? Um, then I realized, oh, I have to figure out how to play this by listening to the song. Then you listen to them, worship songs. Anybody else play in church besides Josh? Anybody else playing? Okay, worship songs are nine minutes long, every single one of them, <laughs> and they all have like, um, I swear it's like three drum kits worth of parts in them, mm -hmm. plus a percussionist. Like, so you have to pick out what your, what parts you're gonna play because you're not playing in a stadium, you're playing in a church for a hundred people. Like, um, so I I had to fake fake that until I figured it out. But you do figure it out. And, and you learn to play with other people, which is really cool. Lots of different people, because people are always rotating in and out of those, those groups. Um, so I feel like the make it, you know, I, I faked that, but the making it lesson for me in that, um, if someone asks you, like that worship leader said to me, I can work with that, you can do this. Um, I had to use that confidence because he had something to lose. If I wasn't any good at this, he, he's not gonna want me there. Um, so I had to, we all have to, if somebody suggests that you do something and they have something to lose, it's because they, they think that you're gonna be a benefit, not a harm. Because it doesn't benefit them at all um, to have you messing up all over the place. So not that you aren't gonna do that sometimes, but um, that's what I learned from that. Um, then um, I was taking, taking lessons here, and Rick suggested that I teach lessons. This is like a couple years into playing, and I was like, I can't, are you kidding me? I can't teach lessons. Like, I don't, I don't know how to play drums, <laughs> you know? Um, but then I remember those other two lessons that I learned from all my faking it and making it. I learned I love doing this, and also, if someone with something to lose suggests that you do something, they, they think you can do that, use that confidence and do it. So I was like, okay, sounds good. I will, um, I will teach people with special needs because I'd been doing Special Olympics for 15 years probably at that point and I love Special Olympics and um, I enjoy helping people learn that don't learn in a traditional sense. So I have my two students that I come in, I teach my two students, I take my lesson, I'm real happy. I come in one day and Sean, says, I have a new student for you. I was like, okay, tell me about this girl's, you know, I'm expecting to hear about her special needs. He's like, no, her dad just wants her to have a female teacher and you're it. And I was like, oh, so you're, I can't do that. Like, I don't know how to, I don't feel like I know enough to teach. Then I remembered, okay, just, just go with it. Um, Cause you do know something. All this faking it is starting to make a little bit more sense. Um, so I start teaching um, this girl and slowly getting more students. Um, special needs and not special needs, doesn't matter. Everyone learns differently anyway, I found. Every, everyone, you need to take a different tactic with everyone. 
Um, so the same girl that started lessons, her dad says to me one day, um, are you playing in a band right now? Because we're looking for someone to, <laughs> to fill in every once in a while. Um, could you come listen to us play? We're playing at the Chameleon Club. Um, come listen and see, it, see what you think. And, you know, internally panicking. I have like this scream in the back of my head like almost all the time, like, ah, like I can't do this. Um, so I'm internally panicking, but I went and I listened and I loved the music, it was great. Um, I was like, I can, I can do that. I, I think I can do that. Um, never having done anything like this. So I, I go and I, I learned some of their songs, like Ed was saying, learned some songs, went and uh, played with them and they said, yep, good enough. <laughs> So um, I started playing with them, and I had my first gig with them. Never have, I'm, I'm really panicking now, because my drum kit is, it's a beginner kit. What kind of kit was that? What kind of kit was uh, that? Voyager. A Voyager? I did, it, yeah, <laughs> okay. But, um, it, you know, it wasn't great. I, I'm not, I wasn't good at tuning things. It, I was panicking, like, I can't use this kit. So um, they let me borrow a kit. I was like, okay, I got a kit. They're like, do you need hardware? I was like, what is hardware? Like, <laughs> I had to learn what hard, hardware is like all the stands. Did everybody else know that? I didn't know that. Like, I'm still really faking it. Um, so I get the hardware. Um, I go to this gig, my first, like, in a bar gig, and um, the guitar player says to me, we're just talking. I mean, I've had a bunch of practices with them, but I'm also c trying to hide the fact that I haven't done much at this point. Now I'm pretty free, like, with that. Um, but I, I'm trying to hide that. And he said, so when's the last time you played a gig? And I said, does church count? And he said, no. And I said, well, this is my first one. And he just looked at me and I said, are you nervous? And he said, nope. And again, if somebody thinks you can do it, you gotta take that confidence. Like he, they wouldn't have me there. And this is what I tell myself all the time. They wouldn't have me there if they didn't think I could do it. Because it, it's not any drummer is better than no drummer. You know, it's, it can be a, a big hassle if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so there's, there's that. Um, oh gosh, a couple, I, I've forgotten lots of things. I didn't know you were supposed to take a rug to a, like with your kit. Nobody told me that. And, he, and this is, and then I, I finally got it. No, you're fine. I made myself more embarrassed. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I finally got a cool kit. It was a Mapet, a Saturn, a Saturn, and it's um, blue, uh, blue red sparkle. So it's really cool. So um, I'm taking it to the, to the gig, and it has the locks on it, so you can. I was like, this is gonna be easy. I can set it all up. Well, I'm setting it up, and like the, the drum on the top, the high tom, it's like not fitting right. And I'm like, what am I doing? And I'm panicking. I can't get it right. I finally just sort of hacked it on there it's like I don't know what I'm doing and then we're getting ready to start and I realized I put it on upside down so in front of everyone I have to like take it off and flip it around um and at the time that was like I was very embarrassed by that um come to find out like that sort of stuff happens kind of a lot and now I'm just I'm just over it but you know when you're when you're first thinking you're faking everything and that no one else does silly things like that does anybody else do silly things like that <laughs> I know, oh, yeah. still, like all the time. My latest one was uh, the microphone. That they weren't catching the snare in like the, the house. Well, it's because I didn't put the microphone on the snare. They were both on the high tom. Like, that's a sound guy's job, right? <laughs> it's not. It's not the sound guy's job. Um, I should have known to do that. Okay, so here's really my. I, there's just a million stories. We all have a million stories like this. Um, I feel like um, what I want you guys to get from this, especially adults, like if you want to try something new, just try. You never know what's going to happen. Um, okay, this is probably my, my favorite faking it story just because I really didn't know what I was getting into. Um, so the band that I was in, um, tell us uh, the bar around here. Tell us okay, 360. Tell us 360. They had this series that was really cool. It's called Original Classics. So one band played their original music, and then one band had to play an entire classic album. Okay, so I believe the albums were pulled out of a hat. We did have time to prepare, um, but our album that was pulled out of the hat was um, Who's Next? The Who. Who's Next? Okay, 
And I didn't grow up playing drums. I don't have drum idols. I don't know who Keith Moon is. I was like, it's classic rock. I can do it. Sure. Okay, I'll do it. Well, <laughs> okay. So come to find out, Keith Moon is like half of the all drummers' favorite drummers. He's also crazy. Never plays the same thing twice. Um, I remember like listening to a song and being like, wow, that's, that's a lot going on there. I'll try to watch and see what he's doing. So I watched it. I was like, wow, that's completely different than what he did on that recording. Um, and, then I, and then I found out he doesn't play with a hi-hat live. And, you know, so I'm like, ah. Um, it, was, it turned out to be a really great show. I'm still a little like, uh, you know, it was, I felt like it was hanging on by a thread the whole time, but it, it was probably my favorite show I've ever ever played. Now if you asked me to do that and I knew what I was getting into, I'd probably, you know, think twice. Because that's a, that's, a, that's a big ask, isn't it? Like Keith Moon? Nobody booed me off the stage or, or anything. So I know it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, so that leads me to my last, um, my last made it moment. And this didn't happen after that show. This only happened like a year or two ago that I realized um, when you like, for instance, if you're learning something new in your lessons, do you th ever think I will never ever get this? Do you ever think that? I will never ever get this. And I remember that always going through my head. Like I would learn something new and be like, this is the thing I'm never, ever, ever going to get. Um, and then you do get it. And I realized I got to the point where I didn't think that anymore. I would learn something hard and I'd be like, oh, that's really hard. It's going to take me forever to get. Or that's really, really hard. Do I care that much about learning that? Um, but it's no longer that feeling of like, I'm never going to get this. So that for me is a, a big made it moment fake it till you make it um so uh yeah and i don't know about you guys but um well i have a friend who she went to her doctor and he said what hobbies do you have and she said netflix and he said netflix is not a hobby and i think of that when i'm out playing because sometimes <laughs> Sometimes it's scary, it's really scary, and you don't feel like you know what you're doing. And I'm like, I could be at home watching Netflix. And then I, I say to myself, Netflix is not a hobby. <laughs> you know, you just, it's, it's sometimes it's good to do these scary things. Um, and I'm and still doing scary things. Maybe, I'm thinking we probably all do that. I'm currently pretending I know how to play the blues. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone, Ed. <laughs> you do very well playing the blues. <laughs> Thank you. But in my mind, I'm faking it. Yeah, totally. So that's all I had for you guys. Does anybody have any stories for me? Did, did that, that spark anything for anyone?